So we've went deep into the science of oxalates and, and obviously we know your stance on them. The obvious argument somebody would bring into this case and say that they're okay or they're maybe even advantageous is hormesis. And we see that a lot in the health and wellness space, things like saunas or cold plunging or exercise, different stressors on the body that in the right dose at the right time actually have a net health benefit. So for somebody that's saying, okay, fair enough, oxalates do exist, they're not denying that, but they're going to argue to the point that in the amount the average person is going to consume them within a healthy diet, they are neutral or even advantageous done the right way. Well, there's so many straw men and all of that, like in a healthy diet. What is a healthy diet? A lot of us who are eating the supposed healthy diet are doing so because we're not healthy. We don't feel good. We have gut problems. We have issues. We're peeing on ourselves. We got shoulder pain. We got tooth pain. We got something going on. And so there's that. Like we we like to think what we're doing is okay. Who doesn't want to think that? Right. So we come with this inherent bias that whatever we currently believe and do is right or good enough. So that makes it hard for us to think clearly about it. The other thing is the science demonstrates that a trigger dose is pretty low. And these days it's hard to stay under that trigger dose. You just don't. You, you're introduced to chocolate cake when you turn one. And then you get to peanut butter sandwiches and you're given sweet potato as a first food and boiled carrots and you know, we, right away, we're off to the races with chocolate, peanuts, and potatoes. By the time we're two, we've been making them common foods that we have nearly every day. So we're growing up on foods that are novel. Peanuts and peanut butter is a brand new invention for human food. We really haven't been eating peanut butter for more than 110 years, 120 years. Um, y- you may think it's normal, Anything that happened in the last 50 years, you think happened forever, but it's it's all pretty novel. So you're, there isn't a good argument that we need foods like peanut butter for hermetic effects, especially since if you really want hermetic effects, do sauna, go out in the cold, <laughs> jump in a snowbank, get exercise, do the things that humans used to do, rather than think that you need all these Reese's peanut butter cups and pepper flavored potato chips in order to be healthy. There's not a good argument for that. Okay, those examples are different than, say, a turmeric supplement or using that to make a tea in the science behind that or having green tea and, and some of the chemicals in that. Yeah, the I see those as critical. being different categories. So how, how do you think about those? People could debate those too because I, I don't think that in the long run that you need those either, even in the curcumin extract, low oxalate, even as low oxalate chemicals. And I mentioned there's just not enough science, but I mentioned about three studies in chapter four about when you try to give these polyphenolic compounds or take them away, the oxidative stress in the body is lower when you take them away than when you include them. Yeah, no, I'm all for going into the science and, and re-navigating the way I see it. It's just most people in the health and wellness space are saying that these are superfoods. Come back to the title of your book and it's like... It's not, I don't think we can blanket statement and compare like peanut butter cups and and potato chips to things like turmeric and green tea. And I just want to make sure we do justice to giving them each their own platform. One of those studies is a green tea study and showing that it's not helping at all. And see, it's equivocal because when you work on Petri dishes and you put plant compounds straight on a Petri dish of cells you get a certain response. And then you make all kinds of assumptions that eating it is going to work that way in your body. But it not at all because the tannins and the, the polyphenols, the body tries to disarm them and get rid of them. And the, the people who are experts in this say that the only way these can really be beneficial, these polyphenol compounds, is if you get the right ones for your metabolism and the right ones for your microbiome and you have the right microbiome, then you can probably extract some benefit from it if you have all those pieces lined up. The problem is we don't know which polyphenols and which combination, which dose and which combination of bacteria you would need to benefit. And the whole thing is this big, gigantic, impossible math problem that no computer can solve for you. If you enjoyed that clip, press here for the full episode I'll see you over there.
People are literally buying these massive clamshell boxes of spinach and using half pound or more of spinach every day. That is really toxic. I was looking back at this thing that I really love. I wanted to share this with you.